thanks for inviting me on because I just wanted to talk about the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> because um, actually, my first thought went to Gandalf, but he doesn't actually die. In um, he doesn't die at all. Well, well, actually, at the end of the third one, technically, he sort Boy of less. dies. <laughs> but yeah, um, but his like fly you fools and falling down the hole that was pretty cool, but not a death. But I'm gonna give it to Boromir at the end of the Fellowship of the Ring. I'm gonna say that is the best movie death ever. It's so emotional because um, he was just like sort of antagonizing Frodo like just before that, and you're kind of like whoa, back off, Boromir. So you're kind of not sure how you feel about him, but then he's defending Merry and Pippin, and you're like oh actually he's pretty cool he's all right kind of like him and boom one arrow in the chest boom second arrow in the chest and then a third as well and uh, almost a fourth until Aragorn sort of steps in but nope it's too late for Barmir he's away he's going for his tea and um, oh my god it was just so sad sitting there as like a what nine ten year old in the cinema just going that guy can't die he's part of the fellowship and I was just just remember being so sad and so into it um, so yeah, I'm gonna say that was the best movie death ever. Can I give a little shout out to a second one? And that is uh, one of my favorite animated movies ever and that's How to Train Your Dragon 2. Oh my God, Stoic dies, the dad dies and it comes out of nowhere and it's so sad. And yeah, again, cried my eyes out at that. Like, but it doesn't take much to make me cry. But um, yeah, that's a really good one. So shout out to that too. Oh, you know what? This was low key the hardest one yet. I had about eight that I cycled through and I decided between the one I'm gonna do and the killing from the killing of the sacred deer because that's the most tense death I've ever seen. But I went into the deep reaches of my mind and decided that the best movie death of all time is Paul Allen in American Psycho. Not necessarily because it's the most gruesome or the most violent or the bloodiest, although it is kind of all three of those things, but because it is just pure unfiltered banter that goes straight into pure unfiltered dread. Like the thing American Psycho does best, both the book and the movie is sort of tiptoe between comedy and then just dark, proper, like scary horror. So we've got Patrick Bateman, who obviously is the titular American Psycho, and he invites his co-worker and rival Paul Allen along to his flat after he's getting them um, smashed. And so they both go up to his penthouse apartment and there's kind of um, newspapers all over the floor and all of the sheets are covered because he's going to kill him with a big axe. But obviously he doesn't give that away, although he probably could because Paul Allen is absolutely out of his mind. So he starts monologuing about Huey Lewis and the news, especially their album Four. And he's talking to Paul Allen in this way, kind of like he's a child or like an idiot. And he's just talking to him at length about why this is the best album potentially of all time and why Huey Lewis and the news are far better than their contemporaries. And then he eventually, he puts it on, he clicks hip to, be, hip to be square, hip to be square, hip to be square, he puts it on, that's blasting, and finally this sort of facade cracks and he says, hey Paul! And then Paul Allen turns around, who's played by Jared Leto, and then Christian Bill comes down with his axe swing, and he says, uh, try getting a reservation at Dorsey and now, you stupid effing bastard, at the top of his you voice. Stupid you stupid effing We can't say the F word, we can't say the F word on uh, YouTube, so I to improvise. And he's just going at him with his axe, and the blood's going everywhere, and it creates this iconic look. He's in this sort of raincoat. And it's just awesome, because it does that same thing that American Psycho does at its peak, where it goes, like I said, from comedy into just genuine terror and I think if you want one scene that distills what American Psycho is it's this in Christian Bale genuinely I'm not even like taking the mickey I think it's one of his best ever performances he gets that balance so well this movie could have fallen flat if it was done wrong but Christian Bale makes it so good and he does this little dance when he puts Hugh Lewis and the news on and that is why it's the best death scene of all time no offense to anyone else in the what culture office but as I say when I come in every single day you're all wrong, and as always, I am right. The best movie death scene is from the best Christmas movie ever, Don't At Me, and that is Die Hard. It is, of course, Hans Gruber's death at the end of Die Hard. It's the most iconic death, and therefore it's the most memorable, and therefore it is the best death scene that we've seen uh, John McClane throughout this entire film going through uh, Nagatomi Plaza and just looking amazing obviously and it's built and built and built to this point and there he is he's got John McClane's wife hostage John McClane's got the gun strapped to his back we all know what happens after that Hans Gruber falls out of the window but grabs hold uh, of John McClane's wife's wrist and more importantly her watch and there's the beautiful slow-mo shot of him slowly lifting the gun up to try and kill his nemesis throughout the entire film and John McClane just clicks off his wife's watch slips away and Hans Gruber falls. As we all know, as the fact that everyone seems to band about, when they shot it, 
Uh, they cho told Alan Rickman they were going to drop him on three. They actually dropped him on two, which is why you see such a terrified uh, expression across his face, because that's real. He's really thinking, oh, bugger, I'm falling now. He falls to his death, and of course, we cut to the police waiting outside, and we have the, the just the just the little icing on top, where the policeman says, I really hope that's not a hostage. It's the best movie death ever, from the best Christmas film ever. I tried to go for one with more of like a comical side to it, you know, that we had these really serious ones in cinematic history, but I really do just enjoy Golden Eyes death scenes. Uh, I was torn between two, but Xenia on the top, she gets her comeuppance after crushing innocent people with her thighs. She gets pulled between a tree and then that's the end of her. But for me, it's Boris Reshankel, where throughout the whole film, he's been a master hacker. He's just been tapping away, you know, doing what we would do now with a VPN. But at the very end, when the whole complex is about to be exploded and destroyed, he comes up surviving what seems to be a big piece of rubble falling on him. And he stands up and goes, yes, I'm invincible. And then he is frozen by liquid nitrogen. You're meant to hit me. That's the end. That's the end. Yeah. Liquid nitrogen. Frozen. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna comprehensively do this like once and for all. What are the biggest moments in cinema? Like the biggest, the most famous moments. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Luke, I am your father. Luke, I am your father. He's looking at you. He's kid. looking at you, kid. Simon, anything else back the room? Mark Wahlberg's dick. Mark Wahlberg's dick. Right. None of these. <laughs> Are deaths, are they? Right? But you know, we always do they always do this list, don't they? The Guardian do a top 100 like every six months because they've got nothing better to do. What is always in those top fives? The pff, chest buster scene in Alien. It's one of the best scenes in all of cinema. And it's a death and a birth at the same time, right? Every this, like, people were fainting in cinemas. Like, my mom refused to let me watch Alien until I was 24. <laughs> I mean, it was mostly suggestive by the time I was 16, but like, purely off that scene because she left the cinema because it was that iconic and that visceral and that just, it's the best death in cinema ever because like, oh, what's the matter with him? Oh, he had that face, oh, we're all having a nice, oh, is there something not right in his stomach? Is he eating something a bit bad? <laughs> Alien out of his chest. It defined horror and cinema and sci-fi and everybody else's like queasiness for about 20 years. People are still trying to replicate stuff like that now and they can't do it because it was that good. Couldn't even tell you the name of the character. I meant to look that up before I came in and I've totally forgotten. Steve, yeah, poor Steve's chest busts out with an alien and that's the end of him. He is one of the most important characters, even though I can't remember his name, in sci-fi cinema, right? Because of that moment. He's the one who's getting his chest busted out of. And that's the end of him. That's the only thing he does in the whole film. He eats a bit, gets a face hugger, and then his chest explodes. So that is the best death in cinema history because it's one of the best scenes in all of cinema history and it's about a death. Nobody, nobody else is bringing anything to the table that is as strong as that. And I guarantee you that now. Don't get me wrong, you're looking at me like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but the one I'm gonna drop is big. Yeah, it's a brilliant death, but it's not one of the most iconic moments of cinema, is it? Yes, it bloody well is. To you. <laughs> to everyone. Anything else? You and what's the best moment in cinema? The best moment in cinema? Uh, the, the, uh. See what I mean? You can't think of anything because this is that strong. Willborn? Yeah. Where he's on the cliff in Mission Impossible, maybe? When he's climbing. When Mission he's climbing, Impossible. yeah, nobody dies there. Two. Where, he's dan where she's like dancing by the fire in Mission Impossible 2. Nobody on dies. The on the motorbike in Mission Impossible 2. Nobody dies quite yet. Oh, I know, uh, the ending of the Bambi Ugly. Yep, nobody dies there. Uh, I've no, not seen it. One of them does. Oh, well, well, I'll, I'll leave it there. Well, we're going to start off with the best movie of all time, which obviously is going to have the best movie death in it. And Mission Impossible 2. No. Close, oh. pretty close. But instead, this is one about giant, smart, genetically engineered poindexter sharks gasp, gasp, that break out of confinement and send a group of underwater researchers into a frenzy. It is Deep Blue Sea. The deepest, the bluest, the seaiest. It is the best film of all time. And the death in it, of course, is Samuel L. Jackson's surprise death. Sort of spoiler if you haven't seen it. Uh, but shame on you if you haven't. 
So Samuel L. Jackson's surprise death in the middle where he's standing there, he's rallying the troops, they're all trapped in this room, oh my god, there's sharks everywhere, but they are safe for a moment. It's fine everyone, they've found a place, they're gonna get themselves together, they're gonna get out of there. I believe in them, we all believe in them. There's a brilliant monologue and he's delivering it. And you know, it's Samuel L. Jackson we believe in, we believe in him, we believe him. Wanna hear what he has to say? Gets to the most intense, like, swelling music, and then he just gets bitten by a shark. <laughs> he just, a shark pops out from behind him, nabs on his head and takes him underwater. Everyone's crying, the music's gone everywhere. And then it just shows the shark swimming off, chewing him for a bit afterwards. And it's, it's literally the best thing you could ever put into cinema. Burn all this alien stuff, burn all this other stuff we talked about. Emotionally affecting, that is the scene. Deep blue sea, man. <sighs> Intense. Could have said that it's Jurassic Park where he gets eaten on the toilet. Oh, Jurassic World when they get eaten by the pterodactyls? Yeah. I meant yeah. to mention that. Mention that. You just did. <laughs> You're just literally crashing my precious time to say things. Um, or I could have said Bing Bong from Inside Out, which is the most emotionally devastating, but also um, good in itself, because it's, it's... As an old man, I have no joy left in my life. And my youth fell away and disappeared a long time ago, and that is exactly what happens in that part of that film, so it's really good, I know. I know, it's like, I could cry. But, the real best death of all time is from a really, really, really bad film, much like Deep Blue Sea. What? It's <laughs> to my face! <laughs> it's, I did look away, it was bit. It's, uh, it's from Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves. Oh. Yeah. I liked Constantine. Yeah, sort of well, but I don't think it's very good. <laughs> um, so, there's a character in it called Father Hennessy, He's an alcoholic, you see what they did. He literally used, <laughs> used up all of their brains on that card, isn't it? Um, and he, at one point, finds out about the devil and he's going to warn Keanu Reeves. But he goes to an off-license first because he's an alcoholic and don't, don't drink. And he gets there and he has a, he's so thirsty that he has to open things to drink them. But he can't drink them. Every time he opens something, the, the bottle is empty. So he goes around the whole store drinking loads of bottles and smashing them and then keels over and it turns out that he's actually drowned himself to death with alcohol and it's the most awful death I think I've ever seen in any film um, and the fact that it was in such a bad film makes it even better. <laughs> I don't like this bad film crap. It is a bad film. Is Deep bad. Blue Sea is a it's bad film. It's an entertaining film. That's fine. Still can be objectively bad. Um, there are so many good affecting deaths in cinema, but I think I have to go for like just the the, the top tier shelf of 90s cinema here and just mention Independence Day because that film has so many meaningless deaths in it. You know, you have all the people who are welcoming the aliens on top of like I think it's the Sears Tower in Chicago that they're like, oh yeah, aliens, come save us. <laughs> and they get like destroyed everywhere and like when you're young and you watch Independence Day you're like wow this is the most incredible thing ever we're all doomed we're all gonna die but but then steps in the president of the United States and his own high flying band of ace pilots who includes a guy who crop dusts and is drunk all the time but little do we know that this man turns out to be the savior of the peace because just when we think all is lost and you know Jeff Goldblum is having a little bit of trouble trying to hack into the into the alien ship because you know, this is the 90s and hacking solves everything. Uh, and then he does it, and the the shield's defenses are kind of destroyed. And you know, I kind of think that you know we can put up clips of the film. That's fine. We do that all the time. But you know, I'm just gonna I've made a little thing here. Uh, so th just imagine that R2D2 is the uh, oh god the alien mothership here. You see it? Is that that is that fine? Yeah. And then this is him, and he's like, "Hello, boys, I'm back." There we go, Independence Day. I think mean, I don't even remember the character's name, I just remember that he goes, Hello boys, I'm back! And then blows up the ship, so... There we go. <laughs>